Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in Internet Shitlords. And uh, I know I haven't uh, posted here, <laughs> I haven't posted a video in, in, a, in a while, it would seem. Um, but I did do the live stream video where I was um, asking for uh, support. And I do check that out. It's my, my previous video for this one was a live stream, so it might be on a different section. I don't know. Uh, on mine, sometimes it shows like videos on one place and live stream on the other. Now, there's a very important charity that you could support, so I'm going to mention that and then go on with my video. Um, a GoFundMe page to help a little girl who was orphaned, has hospital injuries because of a car crash, um, and is now in the care of one of our fellow gamers, so be, be sure to check that out. And then before that, I did well, I did a Twitch live stream interview with a guy. The interview itself was great, but he decided not to put it on YouTube because he was scared. And then on Sunday, we had inappropriate characters. So I've actually done, you know, last Sunday. So I've actually done stuff all last week, but I, I just didn't get around to posting a regular video. I apologize for that. There is another reason, too, which is that I've been working like crazy right now on two things. One is um, getting the Invisible College to, to print. Um, and I can tell you there's some really, you know, great progress going on in that. Um, there's, it's a different publisher, but we're, <laughs> we're, we're, um, doing huge progress with it. And I'm going to probably post on social media pretty soon, some examples of what the pages are going to look like. Um, it is going to be beautiful. It's going to be supposedly from what I've understood, it's going to be available in hardcover, soft cover, color, black and white. And of course, uh, PDF, right? So and you're probably going to be able to get any of those combinations, to the price range that you prefer. But it's going to be one of these books that's going to be really visually, I think, really visually impressive. So I'm very pleased with how it's come, coming along. And then second, what's actually taking the most of my time is that these last couple of weeks I've been on a roll. You know, sometimes my writing process is complicated. Sometimes I will have like a block where I, where I don't write almost anything for two weeks. And then suddenly I get a kick of like one section of a book and I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this is great. And I start writing and writing and writing and writing and writing on that section and, and nothing is stopping me, right? And uh, I've had one of those recently with my upcoming Silk Road slash Crusades setting book. That's going to be a, a future book. I don't know. It probably won't come out this year. It'll probably come out next year given the timeline. <laughs> Forgot to mute this thing. Um... So yeah, it's, it's, uh, the, the Silk Road book is coming along really, really well. And, uh, we're expecting it to, uh, to come out probably next year. And I've, I've already written over a hundred pages now of that, of that book. And it's going to cover kind of the whole area of the Silk Road all the way from Acre to Lanjou, um, during the, the default period is time period is starting in 1192 so just just at the end of the third crusade now of course if you want to play the third crusade and then go off the on silk road that also works and there's there's going to be all the material you need to do that um so yeah that's that's that book is coming along very well so that's some good news um but now here i am with a video i've also another another reason was that there weren't a lot of great topics lately uh, now there are a couple, but uh, this is the one I decided to focus on right now because I'm still kind of researching the other. Uh, it's a smaller topic, but it's, uh, it's a very interesting thing that's going on, which is um, it was reported on some crappy website full of leftists that uh, I think it was Gizmodo, but I don't remember for sure, that uh, Jeff Goldblum, you know, the actor, Jurassic Park, all of that, right? Um, he's going to be appearing on one of these critical role type shows, not critical role itself, but another one that's basically the same thing. A bunch of C grade voice actors, um, pretending to run a D and D campaign while using their improv skills. Right. And Goldblum has uh, somehow been convinced to go on to one of these shows, a show called dark dice, which is a terrible name, right? Like dark dice. Jesus. And he's, he's in there, uh, he's going to be in there, he's going to be playing a sorcerer or something. And uh, this has obviously caused for some people a lot of excitement. It's uh, probably not caused all that much excitement for most you know, normal gamers who don't actually watch these types of stupid shows, right? These, these sort of reality shows, They're the D&D version of a reality show where you have a group of, of people who are almost all professional actors um, of different levels of ability, but professional actors nonetheless. 
um, that are doing this thing of pretending to run a game. Like they're running the game, sort of, but they're using it as an excuse for doing a kind of improv theater where they are playing both the character and the fake personality of themselves as the player, right? Because they're, they're, you, you watch these shows and always the people who are the players are putting on a mask, right? They're putting on an image, they're, they're, they're p playing a make-believe version of themselves, right? They get ridiculously overexcited, ridiculously over emotive, because they're acting even when they're being just the player, not just the character. I'm not saying that they're acting as the character, because of course you're gonna act as the character, uh, but they are doing that, but then they're also acting as the player, and they're acting with like shock and surprise at things that are going to happen, including probably things that they talked about with the DM before the show started, um, and, you know, uh, intense you know, overexcitement, laughing at things that aren't actually funny, all of that stuff. Um, it's just typical, you know, stagecraft, right? They're actors, what do you want? But there are some idiots that think this is real, <laughs> and, and the thing is, this is a very interesting development, because Goldblum, uh, he's not the first kind of named actor to to do D and D related stuff, obviously. But the other ones were people who were kind of already famous for being D and D nerds. Uh, you know, Vin Diesel. You know, or the the whatever the dumbass who played Wesley. Right. Um, those people are already they already had a pre existing connection. As far as I know, Goldblum has no history of being a gamer. He has no you know he has no background in the game. Not as far as I, as I've ever recalled, right? So he's been, you know, he's been hired because he's right now very hip with the trendy hipster millennial crowd, right? Did some show about cooking or something, and you know, and, and has like I don't know a podcast. I don't know what he has, but he's got something that that has made it that you know thirty something millennials get all excited about him. And that's a big part of the audience of Critical Role, right? Tw late twenties, early thirties, right? They're like I don't know, they they think he's the cool uncle or something. Um, He's just kind of a dork, really. <laughs> All right. So he's, he's, he's got, gotten hired to do this. And I think this is very interesting. It's too soon to tell, of course, but I think it could be the start of a trend. And it's a trend that I think the critical role fans and the critical role people are, are thinking, yes, this is it. This is us getting into the big time, right? Um, because now, you know, Goldblum and, and then like this, if he's been put into this, it means the production has been done I mean, unless he's working for free, but I've never saw anything that indicated that, right? Um, the production has, has, has reached a level where they're gonna, you're going to start wanting to hire real actors, right? Like serious freaking actors to do this stuff because apparently there's enough profitability to justify it, right? So you're going to start seeing people that are, you know, maybe not movie blockbuster superstars or you know, ultra serious you know uh, academy award winning actors not the, the current academy award winners because those people are nobodies it's just i mean you know people who won academy awards when they were still given for cinema and not for political demographics <laughs> but anyways uh yeah yeah you might not have whatever the equivalent is today of sir Lawrence olivier doing doing D D a D D twitch live stream right um but you you might end up having a whole bunch of people that are you know well known television stars and you know second to first and a half tier movie stars maybe right like you might not get Robert Downey Jr. because you might not be able to afford it right but um, you know you you might get one of these other guys one of the guys that did one of the Marvel TV shows because clearly they they need the money right so you know you might get the guy that that played Baron Zemo, right? He might come in and, and do it because apparently he needs the money. Um, so th this, is, this is interesting. And you might think that from the point of view of those of us who think critical role is kind of a cancer on the hobby, it's like a, of this, this parasite that is at the same time warping and distorting the nature of what our hobby is because it makes a whole group of... Why? Because it makes a whole group of people who are... Um, in a hobby where you're meant to be an active participant, where the thing that is gives is your membership card into the hobby is that you either play or DM D and D, right? And it and this instead creates an entire class of D and D hobbyists that are just nothing but completely passive receptive participants. They sit there and they they watch as other people play D and D, and they are told this is D and D. They don't live it. They don't experience it. But now they get to claim that they are D&D &D fans because they watch Critical Role, right? 
um, and that's that's wrong. <laughs> Fundamentally, they're nothing. They're just an audience, right? Uh, they're they're people who are who are looking um, for some kind of entertainment, and they really don't care about the hobby as a game. It stops being a game and starts being for them. It's a stage play, and you know this. We know this for a fact because when in Critical Role, when the uh, incredibly unlucky combination of dice rolls, because they really rigged the system, right, uh, led to one of the player characters dying, uh, a huge percentage of Critical Role fans were absolutely outraged. And after that, they did some some polling, and they found out that the, a significant majority of the Critical Role fans basically think the rules shouldn't matter. What should matter is the story, right? So that they're not watching it to see D&D being played. They're watching it for a dramatic adventure story that is being played out in the form of improv theater, right? The, the, the rules and the dice and that is just completely coincidental for that particular group. There is a minority group that are people, you know, some who are already kind of dabblers into role playing that end up being fans of these types of shows, or people who are role players or ex role players who no longer have time to go and role play in their minds. So instead they sit there and watch this for hours which they could have spent actually gaming with other people. You know, even even if you can't go, let's say you're in an isolated area of the world, you can still go on Roll20 or something and find a group, right? So, like, even if you have to settle, I'm not a big fan of playing D&D online, but it's literally a million times, it's infinite times more legit than just sitting there watching other people play on a, on a fake reality show, right? <laughs> So, so for those of us to whom this is a problem in the beginning, this might seem like really bad news, right? Well, if Jeff Goldblum is now playing a character in one of these shows, that might be a sign that, that these shows have triumphed, right? And that, and that this is, this is going to be the future of all RPGs. Except I'm not totally sure. First of all, I can tell you one thing, that people that should be really scared shitless about this, right? The people that should be the most concerned about Jeff Goldblum going on a D&D &D program is everybody who is currently a YouTube Twitch star for being on these D&D &D programs. All the Critical Role cast, all the other versions of the, you know, the Critical Role copycats. Um, all of those guys, all those minor F grade and G grade voice actors and, and micro-celebrities, right, they're going to be out of a job very soon, right? If this, if this is the trend, I mean, if this does turn out to be the trend and you end up hiring, you know, members of people who are, you know, on, I don't know, Hawaii Five-O or something like that and they end up starting to do these, these shows instead, you know, they're not going to need, you know, nerdy McBitch face or something. You know, like you're not gonna need this guy, this 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 unattractive person that had that that has second quality acting skills to do it if you've got you know if you've got Grant Gustin doing it, right? The guy that played the Flash. Right? He's a bigger celebrity, right? So why why will we need a guy who who designed a story game once or who wrote an article about feminism and D D, right? Like you, you don't need those people. If it stops because that's that's the that's the thing, right? If this becomes a celebrity pastime, right, a celebrity level, um, a celebrity level business, because that's what it's going to be. And that's what it already is. Critical Role is a business. If people are making money. They're making a lot of money off of pretending to play D and D, right? And now, if if it's so much money that bigger forces start to realize, well, you know, it's enough. It can make enough money that if we hire people that are like sort of famous. You know, if we get like, I don't know, they did the Karate Kid reboot in YouTube and that was a huge success, right? So let, let's say they get uh, Charles in Charge, the cast of Charles in Charge or something like that, you know, some other or whatever, any 90s show, you know, the, the, the find find a group of, of, uh, of actors that kind of like do a revival of that in role playing form, right? And it doesn't matter if it's any name that has the most minimum of recognition because outside before, you know, like the Critical Role cast, before they did Critical Role, outside of, I think, one or two of them that would have been known only to really hardcore anime fans for voice work, none of these people were known actors because they were basically not successful actors. I mean, they were, they were moderately, very, very mild, mildly successful in that I guess most of them were working actors. Like, I, I think, I don't know, I'm speculating here, but I think probably some of them, if not all of them, 
were doing voice work acting as their full-time job. So that's already one step above, you know, a waiter that wants to be an actor or something like that. But it's miles away from having had, you know, even a supporting role in a, in a CW series <laughs> or something, you know, having, having been a, 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 a frequent guest star on shows on, you know, Fox sitcoms or something. Like a, you, if you, you haven't gotten to that level, you haven't been able to be like a, a, a short term love interest character on the Big Bang Theory, <laughs> then yeah, you're not you're not really a very successful actor, are you? And so if now the idea is going to be we we push up the whole level of the industry of the you know the the reality show fake D and D improv acting industry online um, by hiring better better known. You know, mini right now it'll be second or third rate celebrities, right? Like Goldblum is somewhere in between a second and first rate celebrity. He's not, you know, he's not a blockbuster like a movie with just Goldblum probably would would still do really really well, but it wouldn't be like it wouldn't make a billion dollars, but it would still do really well. So he's a pretty big celebrity. And then you know, if if they hire two or three other people like that, then suddenly you've got a show where everybody there is a celebrity. So you're not going to have like four people that have significant television and film credits, and then one guy who uh, has some shit products on itch.io for their, you know, uh, <laughs> for, for their uh, RPGs about uh, the struggle with adult incontinence or something, <laughs> like whatever, whatever they're going to be doing, right? Uh, or, or somebody who has acted on five different Twitch D and D shows and formerly did softcore porn and now has her own OnlyFans, right? Like that's not gonna that she's not gonna be in the same room as you know one of the chicks from Baywatch. <laughs> so there, there 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 are reasons why they won't be allowed to mingle. Um, so really, the first people that are gonna be the victims of this if this trend continues are gonna be all the people who are currently on these shows. And it couldn't have happened to better people as far as I'm concerned, right? Because these are people that are profiting off. Uh, I mean, you, I, 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 I don't hold it against them necessarily because they found a way to make money off of stupid people. Okay, fine, right? Like they, they found a way to get people to watch them do improv theater for four, for four hours a, a night and, and imagine that that's actually how D&D is. But then, you know, these are desperate people that for whatever reason are, don't actually want to play D&D. So instead they'll watch this and you're making money off of that, off of letting other people watch your improv acting. Well, yeah, fine. You're, you're living your dream. I don't hate you for that. But I do hate you as collateral, you know, like you're a, you're, you're, uh, you're collateral damage in the fact of there being this war on actual D&D, right? A war on the actual hobby of people that want to like corporate interests that want to turn the hobby into a lifestyle brand instead of a game, right? And, and woke interests that want to turn the hobby into a system of propaganda indoctrination rather than an actual game. And you serve both those interests. So you're my enemy and I'm going to be happy when you suffer because of that, <laughs> okay? Um, so th they'll be the first victims. And second... I think this is also a very good sign of supporting the theory I had that this is a fad, right? We have now reached the state of the fad where bigger business interests are going to move in on the territory and try to take over. That might work, it might not, right? Like maybe it'll turn out that there's that that there isn't a vaster audience available for this that the like the CR fanatics, the critters are basically the audience and they're going to stay loyal to Critical Role, even if there's like this other show that is, you know, that has like a bunch of big name cast members. That might be true. I, I somehow doubt it, though. I think you're going to get a lot of cross nerd interest here if they get if they pick the right people. Goldblum, for example, is an excellent choice, even though he's probably not actually a gamer at all. I, I don't know for sure, but there's a good chance he's not. Um, he's a good choice because of he, he specifically appeals to the type of nerd demographic that will watch these kinds of shows. So if that succeeds, then it's going to move the whole, accelerate the whole process of the fatification of it, right? Especially if like there's one other show now, like if there's one show that 
that it becomes a bigger hit than Critical Role because it has celebrity uh, players on it, um, celebrity actors on it in these reality show roles. Um, if that does better than Critical Role, then you're going to see a snowball effect. So there's going to be a ton of this stuff. Um, and it's going to become overwhelming, and then it kind of the bubble of the, the fat is going to burst, and probably it's all going to come crashing down. Um, either that, or there's a much, much bigger market than I believe, right? Like maybe maybe this this is the new television. I don't know. Maybe watching people pretend to play D&D will become the new really big medium of entertainment of the 21st century, uh, I, I would be a bit surprised if it did, but if it does, you know, then then there it is. It'll become an establishment entertainment, and then it'll be controlled again by the corporations. The point is that that it's going to move to become something very different, and and, and it, there's kind of two ways that the regular D and D hobby can win here. The first way to win is if these if if critical rule and these things just collapse, right? If they're just gone. And then we're back to having our hobby. But <laughs> the other way to win against them is if they become so successful that they become so far distant from the hobby that you cannot see it as the same thing anymore. So if, if there's such a level of success, if like you start getting big companies and big celebrities doing all of these things, and then it's not people who pretend to be normal gamers anymore. Like nobody, else, like if, I don't know, if you end up getting... Robert De Niro doing one of these shows, he's not going to be, oh, yeah, I've been a gamer all this time, you know. No, he's not going to say that, right? He's going to just say, no, I'm a fucking actor, right? <laughs> he's going to be there to act. <laughs> and so uh, he'll be there and and everyone will know, okay, this is a this is a show. This is not the game D&D. And so there will be this bridge that now there will be much less influence of what's going on in those shows in the actual hobby itself. It won't be. It won't be as connected. Maybe what will happen is that if some of these shows have like plot lines that are really um, successful, you know, they make a, a successful season of the some, you know, whatever it's going to be the, you know, uh, God, Godfathers of Waterdeep or something like that with Robert De Niro. Uh, then if that if that becomes really successful, maybe you'll end up seeing Wizards of the Coast make a source book of that. But that's not much different. From how like you might have a successful TV show or or um, or book series, and some company will try to make an RPG out of that, right? It doesn't mean that no, nobody thinks that because there's a Game of Thrones RPG that that watching Game of Thrones is being a D and D fan, right? <laughs> it's not the same thing. So this is this is I think the other way of the solution. Either way is going to work for me as far as I'm concerned. So I am not troubled by the fact that Goldblum is is com coming to play D and D on a different, especially because it's going to be on a different show than Critical Role. Um, so suddenly, I think the people that should be very scared of this are the the small time hustlers of this current fad. Um, that have been using it for their uh, for their own enrichment and also to promote corporate and woke interests. That's everything for today. If you like this video, please, please share it anywhere that you that you think it'll be appreciated. Also, anywhere that it'll piss people off. Show it to the critters. I don't care. Let them come here. They'll give me a bunch of dislikes. That's the, they always give me dislikes. And anytime I do a video about this, my ratio of likes to dislikes which is usually in the nineties, right? Ninety percent likes. Um, it, it like drops because the critters are getting mad at me, but that's okay. I don't mind that. That's, that works for me too. So, uh, send it around, share it anywhere you can. If this is the first time that you're watching, please check out my other videos, subscribe to the channel, like this video. And if you want to support me, I, um, you can get, you can support me on, on PayPal or on Patreon. Uh, there's links in the description of this video to, to either of those. But if you want to support me and get something back, check out my games, right? Check out stuff like, well, it's hidden behind the coffee here, but uh, The Old School Companion, which is full of stuff to make your D&D campaign more medieval authentic, Lion and Dragon, the medieval authentic OSR game, which is basically, uh, well, if you don't know what the OSR is, you need to check out my video about the, how the OSR is cutting edge and will change how you play D&D. It's basically old school D&D uh, derived rules, but done in a way that is meant to be like, Super medieval, authentic, medieval, realistic in in a way comparable to stuff like, um, you know, like the, the sort of 
social elements and um, and violence, and even the magic is based on how medieval people really looked at magic. The monsters are based on real medieval folklore, all that stuff. Or Cults of Chaos, which is my fantastic source book that lets you generate evil enemy groups, sects, cults, heretics, witch, witch covens, um, demon worshippers, and uh, all of these groups with uh, a set of tables that will let you create a different enemy group every single time you use them. And that will be that are divided among things like you know social class and profession and and uh, locations and things like that that will um, allow you to really very quickly create a nemesis that will form the basis of a plot for any adventure in any OSR D and D or fantasy RPG, but with a very medieval authentic bent as well. Uh, or check out my RPG Pundit Presents. PDF series. The link is in the description below. There's up. There's 104 issues so far. There's more coming soon. I got to send an email to presses and ask them when's the next one coming out because it should be coming out soon. Um, but the, there's 104 issues right now. Each one has a different subject. All sorts of stuff from weird Gonzo role playing, you know, science fantasy stuff, all the way to like medieval authentic. Uh, there's monsters, items. There's uh, adventures of different sorts. Um, there's magical books, there's um, all kinds of stuff, anyway. <laughs> uh, groups and NPCs, things like that. Every Anything you imagine, you're going to find it in those 104 ep issues. So you're bound to find one that you'll, fi that you'll think is interesting. They only cost between a buck and $4.99. And so it's like you're buying me a coffee at most, but you're also getting something back for yourself that you can use in your game. So uh, please check those out and, and uh, help me out to support my work and my continuing to do videos and tell you about developments in the hobby and the wars of the hobby <laughs> like this one. Thank you very much. Currently smoking Lorenzetti A grade, Alpha, I think, Lorenzetti Alpha and uh, Argento Latakia.